Big topic, guys. Why do Hindu gods and goddesses have weapons? Are they violent? Itanam, guys, welcoming you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shini Itananda Paramashivam. So this is a huge click I got about gods and goddesses and why they are depicted with weapons. And uh, some foreigners who do not understand, foreigners by mean foreign to the, the Hindu tradition, to Sanatana Hindu Dharma, they will, um, they won't understand at the beginning, why is it? You know, <laughs> Hinduism, Sanatana Dharma is considered as the, actually we sh I should say Sanatana Dharma, if we want to get rid of this Hindu thing, which is something that was added to it by the British or the Persian, or whatever, uh, recently in the era. It is not... Uh, representing the authenticity of the, the purity of the tradition. So Sanatana Dharma um, is considered the most non-violent tradition. But then their gods and goddesses have weapons. What does that mean? Is it a contradiction? No. So this is one example of when Swamji says, for instance, some people say Swamji says things, it doesn't make sense. Uh, because you don't understand right away, it doesn't mean that it's not true. If you see Hinduism, uh, Sanatana Dharma being said, being uh, considered as non-violent, and you see gods and goddesses with weapon, right away you can come to the conclusion, this is nonsense, this is stupidity, and you can discard the whole thing and abuse. But that is uh, a very immature conversation with life. Again, if you do not understand right away, that doesn't mean it is wrong. You have to start seeking and try to understand what is going on? So I'll share one click I got uh, that was uh, Swamiji shared and really clicked with me in the satsangs about gods and goddesses and how it clicked with me. See, the reality is pure consciousness, Paramashivoham, the space of Paramashivatwa. When we enter into, when we cherish delusion, we enter into this world of manifestation which we consider real but it is not the ultimate reality it is not real because it is not permanent anything that is not permanent anything that is not eternal cannot be considered real so now um, in the manifested existence there is two possibilities powerfulness or powerlessness Gods are the embodiment of powerfulness. Demons are the embodiment of powerlessness. Demons will have weapons, gods will have weapons, and they go to war. What does it mean? Well, this is the click I got. A demon is a powerless cognition. Um, for instance, it will have Pride can be powerlessness, lust can be a demon, envy can be a demon, jealousy can be a demon, fear can be a demon, anger can be a demon, vengeance can be... Like that, there's so many types, so many powerless forms of powerlessness which can be embodied as a demon. That demon will have a weapon. What is the weapon? It is the cognition he is cherishing which is making him a demon making him powerless. For instance, you can have a cognition about life. You do not understand that Shiva is causeless auspiciousness. You feel that life is against you and you will feel like a, um, life is unjust. This is a cognition you have. Reality is life is causeless auspiciousness. Shiva, Paramashivoham. That has to, so be it. Whatever you want, you get. That is life. But when we are deluded, when we cherish delusion, we might feel life is unjust. When you start to hold on to the cognition, life is unjust, you will be powerless because you will feel that you are fighting against life. So the demon is the powerlessness. For instance, okay, I'll give a more concrete example. Life is unjust is your cognition, which is embodied as the weapon. That is your weapon. Life is unjust, makes you an angry person. You're angry about life because life is not fair. You become a demon, embodiment of anger, using the life is unjust as a weapon to engage with life. Now, a god 
is the embodiment of powerfulness. Life is causeless auspiciousness, makes you an embodiment of a god. Your weapon means, um, no, sorry, life is causeless auspiciousness is the cognition you're cherishing, which is your weapon, embodied as the weapon. This is the weapon you have. This cognition makes you a god. It makes you, for instance, very peaceful and serene. You're the embodiment of serenity. Serenity is powerfulness. Your weapon is life is auspiciousness. That is your cognition. That is your weapon. And, and like that, gods and goddesses are depicted. And that's, that's the click I got. Whether you're a god and a, or, or a demon depends on the cognition you're cherishing, the weapons you're holding, and the space you decide to cherish. If you're angry with life is unjust, you're a type of demon. And like that, there can be infinite types of demons because there's so many different negative spaces and there's so many different cognitions which can generate powerlessness in you. And that's why there's depicted very di different types of demons. It's always a space of powerlessness, but it's a space of powerlessness a little bit like this, a little bit like that. Various permutation combinations of powerlessness. In the same way, there's millions of gods because different permutation combination of powerfulness. So it is not about violence. When a, when, a, when a demon and a god engage, it's basically the thought currents, the cognition are engaging with each other. And, you know, whatever is the person who is the, the cognition, which is the most stronger, will take over. In the same way, in your life, you might have anger inside of you and you might have serenity inside of you also. And at some point in your life, you will be challenged. Your anger will come forward. At other points, your serenity will come forward. And at some point, when you go into the spiritual journey and you, with you get initiated by the Guru and you start to engage in this whole thing, at some point, you will have to make a decision to discard one of them. Do you want to be integrated to the demon, the anger, or do you want to be integrated to the God, the serenity inside of you? And there will be a Shiva, Paramashiva, Guru, um, Paramashiva will manif will will um, you will be tested in the way that you will come. Th there will be many situations in your life where you will have to decide whether you want to cherish anger or serenity in front of a certain situation. And at each time you decide for one, you become stronger in that. So if you start to constantly cherish anger, then you will become more and more of a demon. If you constantly cherish serenity, you will become more and more into a god. Until we realize that we are consciousness and then we merge with Paramashiva and we are beyond gods and demons and this duality, this uh, perceived conflict in the manifested existence. So that's a powerful click I got. So I wanted to share with you, Hinduism is not foolish. It is very deep, but you need to have patience and seeking to understand it. And everything of, Hindu, of Sanatana Dharma is based on the science of enlightenment. The purpose is for you to become enlightened, it means to drop the space of God and demon and to enter into the space of Paramashivoham, that you are Paramashiva which is beyond the space of gods and demons. But as you, as you work, as you seek towards that space of Paramashivoham, you will be in that kind of a demon-god kind of uh, perceived conflict existence. But then we have to constantly decide to stand for powerfulness, for gods and not demons, gods and goddesses and not demons. Uh, and demoness, I don't know what is the feminine dimension of demon. I think demon S is it. So yes, if you have any questions, please drop your questions below. Subscribe, click the bell icon to know when I upload videos. I upload every day so you can expect to have new content every day, many videos a day. And uh, like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Har Har Mahadev, Sanatana Dharma, Nityananda.